Um, the instrument, uh, by definition, is called a hand pan. It's in this UFO-shaped case down here. It's not this. Yeah. Um, this is my office, like I say. So, <coughs> excuse me, two seconds. Okay, there we are. Oh, can I ask a very big favor? So, um, you're wearing a blue shirt. Yeah, okay, I'm wearing a blue shirt. Can you randomly press these two buttons? They're going to go through some pictures. Um, yeah. If that's okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, because uh, I mean, the reason that I'm here, basically, is because I had no control over the um, you know, foundations of what brought me here. You know, um, a few years ago, I came across this instrument, I'll show you in a second, and um, I began to play it in public. Um, I never thought about taking photos of myself doing so. Um, I never thought about where I would end up doing it. I just realized that I kind of wanted to go into public and play an instrument, you know. So a few years later down the track, I realized that, wow, I need to start taking control of this. You know, it's running away with me. So basically what happened was uh, one of the videos reached, I think, well, one video was filmed of me a couple of years ago, uh, years ago in Norway. And when it reached about two and a half million hits, I thought, it'd be really good if that video has my name in it, you know? Um, so now it's reached about seven or something like this, and um, I had to start an online campaign where I got everyone on Facebook to basically email this fella and say, please put this guy's name in it. So now it has my name in, so that's good. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, so basically this instrument on here, it looks like a UFO. Uh, it's made of steel. This one weighs about six and a half kilos. Um, what to say? It looks lovely. You know, um, I've got a confession as well I should start off with, actually. It's actually different from all the ones that, uh, the photos that you see above me. This one's different. Okay, uh, I'll start the whole story at the beginning. So basically, the instrument you see here, that's, um, it, the name of the instrument is a hang by a company called Panart. By definition, it's a hand pan. Uh, this one here is a bell uh, by a guy called Louis, who's called Bellart, and he's based in Spain. So for the last six years, I've been playing this one. And yesterday, I got this one. You know, so imagine you've got a lovely car, you're driving everywhere, you see the view from so many places, you take it everywhere, you listen to music in the car, it's great. A few years down the line, you get a new one. Well, that's basically what happened yesterday. So it's the same tuning. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you that, because it's really fun. Um, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, before I start, actually, I'll do the whole shebang. Uh, when I go into public, normally I've got some other stuff as well. There's a case there, you know, there's some shakers here, uh, and some bells that I'll tie to my ankles as well. Um, one second, there we go. I'll tell you about them in a second. And yeah, so basically, um, I took it upon myself a few years ago to start traveling with this instrument. Because uh, upon you know, sort of sitting down in public in London, I realized that the people who were stopping for me were tourists. So, okay, so that's good. So where else do tourists go? You know, so you can imagine how my travels have been going for the last few years. You know? uh, I frequent a few spaces. Uh, India, I've been to like six or seven times now. <laughs> it's good fun. I like curry. <clears throat> So yeah, basically, um, very quickly again, so the instrument again, I've got to keep on saying this, otherwise what happens is I get people asking me as soon as I leave the auditorium. So again, the instrument, this one is called a uh, bell, but by definition, the instrument is a hand pan, meaning a steel pan you play with your hands, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I saw it for the first time in the year 2005 um, in a festival uh, in England. And at that point, the company that were making the original ones, which is the ones you see, not there in a minute, but the, one, the other photos, um, they only make uh, around about 100 per year. Uh, very quickly, I'll tell you this one. So this photo here is very important. Whenever I go to a stage, I need to say a mic holder, and I need to actually sort of define what a mic holder is. Because as you can see in that photo there, I said to someone that I had a gig in India, uh, I need a mic holder. And um, for 20 minutes, you can imagine. <laughs> so, now, so now I actually send a photo of the stage setup that I require, just for simple reasons like this, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll tell you about the instrument again quickly. So basically, it was invented in Switzerland in the year 2000. Um, the guys who invented it in Switzerland, they were making the steel pan before. And they went into very much into the research of the actual metal. This is a very low carbon steel that's been uh, heated in an oven. Um, they call it um, nitrated. And it basically allows the steel to become very strong, but yet not brittle, because apparently steel is quite brittle when it becomes, uh, you know, when you hit it with a hammer, it can, it can break. Whereas this one doesn't break so much. Um, yeah, I saw it again in the year, two, uh, year 2005. I became friends with a guy who was playing it. I played his for a bit. He went off somewhere. I applied to the manufacturers. Can I buy one? I had to wait two years on the waiting list to receive this. At that point, they were making 100 or so a year. Now they're only making about 30 a year, which you can imagine is pretty depressing for anybody who wants to play it. And I'll come to that in a second. I can actually play some music. So. Um, It's really nice, sorry, I only got this yesterday, like I say, so anyway.
So that's a quick little demo of what the instrument sounds like when I hit it. Thank right, you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. So, very quickly, uh, I'm in a room full of people that I probably don't need to tell how this works. Uh, seeming that, um, you know, I never actually went to university for anything other than guitar manufacturing. So I'm actually a carpenter. Uh, whereas everyone here, I, was, I think uh, there's a few astrophysicists and all sorts of stuff going on. Anyway. Um, slightly out of my depth, but it's okay. Um, so anyway, smile. Uh, no, so basically, yeah, as you can see on this instrument, um, to define it very quickly, on a piano you've got a long string, and you've got a, lo a long string for the bass and a short string for the treble, usually. Um, well, you put that string in a circle, I've basically got dents. So I've got a small dent, which is a high note, and I've got a larger dent, which is a lower note, if that makes sense. And it's one piece of metal. Uh, each note has actually got two harmonics inside. So that's why when I hit one place, you hear the, the fundamental note, but you also hear in an octave. Oh, sorry, excuse me, it's actually different from the one I had before. There's the octave, there's the fifth. Um, and the way uh, it sort of uh, came about is obviously the steel pan from Trinidad. It's a beautiful instrument, it's made out of oil drums, you know. Um, very loud, it's tuned with hammers, and when you play it, you have to use sticks, and the sound carries very, very far. Um, so the guy who actually uh, designed and developed the first one of these, uh, a guy called Felix, in, um, who's in Switzerland, he loved the steel pan so much, he was making them for a very long time. He went to Trinidad to learn how to make, traditional, uh, make it traditionally. But he realized it's very bloody loud. And if you want to play it with a flute player, well, the flute player needs a big amplification or needs to be quite far away from the actual instrument player. So, um, yeah, basically, he uh, kind of uh, decided that he wanted to create an instrument where yeah, it's the feeling of the steel pan, but quieter. So that's where this came from. Um, so quickly, I'll tell you about these other guys I use over here. These are called Cascas, and they're basically two seed pods from West Africa, from Ghana. Uh, from my understanding, they're one of the most ancient West African instruments, um, the original Walkman, you know? So you just shake them like this, inside there's stones, uh, a little bit of sand, and there's a bit of string that separates them. So this is from a few thousand years old, and this is from this century. But like I say, they're about the same volume, and the reason I started playing this is because I drank too much coffee, basically. Uh, I had to do something with the right hand side. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'll play you another quick one, okay? Volume control. So again, I could tell you about the bottom. No, please, okay. The timer of death. Come on. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, guys. Cheers. <laughs> anyway, so basically, um, yeah, if I cover the bottom up uh, and play it on a hard su on a hard surface, it doesn't really work. When I first started playing this instrument, I used to sit on the floor, thinking, "Great, it's a small instrument. I travel everywhere in a backpack. Off I go." But then I realised that in London, the same weather as here in the Netherlands, it rains a lot. So uh, after a few pairs of jeans were ruined, you know, um, I decided to get a chair. And I realised that when I sit in a chair, it actually makes a sound. Yeah, it's actually my body, the height of my body in relation to the floor that gives the tone as well. If I play like this very quickly. So you can imagine, as I cover up the hole, it changes the actual sound. So depending where I'm sat, I mean, if I'm in the auditorium here, it's lovely today. Um, one of my favorite places to play is normally is in churches. So um, 
Yeah, you can imagine the acoustics, the actual buildings are made for that. But these days, I find if I want to find a building that's had the acoustics made for that, I have to sit in a shopping mall. Really, it's unbelievable. You know, you think in the, in the history, you know, people used to obviously go to church and pay worship to the, the players, the, you know, the, the characters. And now people actually go to the shopping malls and pay tribute there instead. You know, so the, the, the architecture kind of works out the same. You know, um, which leads me to where I'm actually going next week. Actually, strange enough. Um, but yeah, just very quickly to tell you, I've been promoting this instrument uh, for the last maybe five or six years now, um, which has been wonderful. I've had a great time doing it. But what's been frustrating me a lot, I actually trained before I was playing this instrument. Like I said, I was at university uh, studying guitar manufacturing. Uh, so I was learning like a 50, 60 year old tradition of making guitars, which is obviously the format had been there for a long time. Okay, we're using new materials and trying to find stuff, but we're still using the same geometry, uh, the, the string length, you know. And um, I basically realized uh, when I saw this instrument that, okay, that's nice, I'll play that. Uh, but then I realized that I'm actually promoting the instrument more than anything else. I mean, I should say quickly as well, all my music is open source. I believe in, uh, you know, obviously download the way you want. You know, if you want, I've tried to keep the same emphasis like, for the internet as what I play in the street. You know, people walk past me, they flip me a coin if they like it. They don't, if they don't, it's great, you know. Uh, well, the internet, I'm trying to use the same way. Like the video that's hit 7 million people now, if I would have got, you know, 1% of those people to flip me a coin, that's why I should put my name in it. Anyway, <coughs> I wouldn't be living in the back of a transit van, you know? Anyway, um, so yeah, the whole thing is that, yeah, as I say, yeah, the, the music is available on my website. I, I play as Daniel Waples Hanging Balance currently. Um, you're all invited to come there. And actually, before I go, I've got a little bit longer. I'm going to play another song in a second, but I've just got to ask a big favor. I don't know if it's going to come out very well, but I mean, I've got hundreds of pictures of myself. Um, I can, yeah, you can kind of see yourself, so if everyone can just smile, that'll be fine. Thank you, thank you, yes, very good. Like I say, yeah, do come to Facebook and tag yourself, because then I've got your details. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, I've got you twice, sir. You can tag yourself twice, okay? Thank you very much there. Thank you. Um, <coughs> sorry, I'll put that down there for a second. They're very distracting, aren't they? Anyway, um, so I'll play another quick track. Um, it's actually a composition I wrote with a violin player. He's actually meeting me tomorrow. We're playing in a church. The day after, we're playing in a castle here in the Netherlands. Again, come to the website if you want to come check us out. Daniel Waples, Handpan, you're wonderful. Last little song before the timer of death kicks in. Thank you. Thank you.